Hello everybody, we're going to talk about skeletal structures. How do you draw organic skeletal structures? Well, I have three little rules here for you. The first one is that you're going to assume that carbon is at any conjunction of two lines and at the end of a line. Let me give you some examples right now um, over here. So the conjunction is going to be where you see a bend. That means in that bend, that conjunction, there's a carbon there a carbon there, carbon, 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 carbon. Wherever you see the bend, uh, that conjunction of two lines coming together this way or this way is going to be a carbon. Uh, now, when the line ends, that also indicates a carbon. So I'd have a carbon right there at the end and there would be a carbon right there for the end. Uh, assume that there are enough hydrogens around every single carbon to give it a total of four bonds. You know that carbon has four valence electrons, so it needs four more valence electrons to have a full octet. Uh, so when we draw these skeletal structures, it's assumed and understood that you have enough hydrogens that every single carbon is populated with a total of four bonds. Lastly, draw all heteroatoms. Remember, those are atoms other than carbon and hydrogen. Uh, and you want to draw the hydrogens that are directly bonded to them. So I have five examples to help you understand this. This is called a cyclohexane. I first drew the complete structure for you. Uh, so we've got our six carbons here. Um, now notice each carbon is bonded to another carbon. So this carbon, for example, has one bond to the carbon above it, one bond to the carbon below it, which means it has two hydrogens. So to convert this into the skeletal structure, I get out my marker and I start by looking at one carbon. So I go, okay, there's one carbon and then I do an angle, second carbon, third carbon, there's my fourth one, there's my fifth, there's my last one, and then I would just connect them. And I know that the hydrogens are taken care of. Uh, it's understood inside of that, that every carbon has enough hydrogens um, to make four bonds. So for example, if I'm looking at this conjunction right here, those two lines coming together, notice this carbon has one, two bonds to other carbons. Two bonds, well it needs two more hydrogens. Look, sure enough, there it is. There's the carbon bonded to one, two carbons, and then there are the two hydrogens to give it a total of four bonds. Fill that octet. Let's do some more. Uh, so here's the complete structure, and now we're going to write down the skeletal structure. So I'd start with this carbon. There's my first carbon. I go up for my second, down for my third, and then up for my fourth. Uh, now notice we have a heteroatom in this. So attached to this carbon right here, that fourth carbon, I would do a line to the oxygen, and then I will write the hydrogen next to it. Notice we drop the lone pairs. When we do skeletal structures, we don't draw the lone pairs on the heteroatoms. We do, however, draw the hydrogens. We're explicit with the hydrogens. Uh, notice, this is kind of fun. This carbon right there has three bonds, right, as it's written. It has one bond to this carbon, a bond to that carbon, a bond to this oxygen. There it is, bond to the carbon, carbon, the oxygen. So it's understood there's just one hydrogen bonded to that carbon to get its full four bonds. Uh, let's do number three. Uh, ooh, we have both heteroatoms, cyclical, and then a straight line. So let's put all of this together. Uh, I would start with our cyclical. I can see there's one, two, three, four, five. Five carbons because there's five conjunctions. So you draw your five carbons, connect all of those. I have one carbon attached right here. Uh, and I know that because at the end of the line, there's a carbon. So here's my carbon right there. Start filling in my hydrogens. Well, this end carbon needs three more hydrogens to have four bonds. It only has one bond to this carbon, so there's one, two, three hydrogens to make that a total of four bonds. Look at this carbon right here at that conjunction. So this carbon's bonded once to the carbon above it, once to the carbon below it, once to the carbon on the left, three bonds, it only needs one hydrogen. So there's the one hydrogen to get one, two, three, four total bonds. Uh, kind of interesting, I have my heterocarbons over here. Notice the heterocarbons 
don't have the lone pairs when we draw the skeletal structure. I have my carbon, there it is. Oh, oh, and check this out. So I have my carbon, I do my single bond to the chlorine, single bond to the chlorine, add the lone pairs for the complete structure. There's my three lone pairs on each of those. Remember chlorine has seven valence electrons, shares one electron with that carbon. So it senses two, four, six, eight total electrons. Now what's interesting about this carbon right here, there are no hydrogens on it. It has one bond to a carbon, second bond to the carbon above it, third bond to the uh, upper chlorine, fourth bond to the lower chlorine. So no hydrogens on that carbon. Let's look at number four. Oh, now we're getting some double bonds on hetero atoms and between the carbons. So let's start. Here's my first carbon. When you end with a line, again, just means that there's a carbon there. So here's my first carbon. There's a second carbon and it has a double bonded oxygen to it. No hydrogen because it's double bonded. I went ahead and added those lone pairs. Here's my third carbon. Ooh, the third carbon has a double bond. So between this third and fourth carbon, I added that double bond. So there's my fourth carbon, fifth, sixth, and then look at this. It ends with an OH. Students will ask me, well, Mrs. Lobb, is the end of a line, is there a carbon and a hetero? No. Now, when you end, if there's any hetero atom written, there's no carbon there. So look at the difference. You end with a line, nothing's written, that infers a carbon. You end with a line and there's a hetero atom, it's the hetero atom that finishes that. This carbon is that this upper conjunction ends with an oxygen, okay? So if you end a line with a hetero carbon, there's no carbon right there, okay? It's telling you, oh, you just end with that heterocarbon. I also put the lone pairs on that. Uh, okay, I think that one's good. Our last one, last example. Look at this carbon right there, kind of interesting. It is bonded to a carbon above it, a carbon below it, and double bonded to a carbon to the right. Let's start with this carbon out here. <clears throat> so I've got this carbon right here, bonded to the second carbon. Oh, and then this one has a carbon above it. Fabulous. This same carbon is double bonded to the carbon on the right of it. Here's your next carbon. And then it ends with the heteroatom bromine. Let's count hydrogens quickly. So this carbon only has one bond, which means it has to have one, two, three hydrogens to make a total of four. The second carbon, ooh, it has one, two, three, four. Four bonds to carbons. So this has no hydrogen. It already has its four bonds. The carbon up above, it only has one single bond to a carbon. So it needs one, two, three additional hydrogens to get it to four. Our carbon down here has one, two, three bonds. So it needs one more hydrogen. This carbon has one, two bonds, so it needs two more hydrogens. And then of course, bromine will only ever do a single bond. So there you have skeletal structures. I like skeletal structures. It makes it really, really fast drawing. I simply look at my carbons, put my pencil down, and I start doing the conjunctions to represent the carbons, add in what I have to. Uh, going backwards, I'm really careful to count the number of bonds that the carbon has based on conjunctions and then add the hydrogens back in. Okay, nice. So proud of you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.